What is going on everyone? Hope you're all doing well out there. Today we're going to be taking a look at performance on a budget setup that is geared directly at budget conscious gamers, someone that doesn't want to break the bank as far as a build is concerned and is looking to play a lot of esports titles and that will certainly be reflected in our testing as well as the, te the testing methodology that we're using here for this setup. So this is all starting really with the Ryzen 1300X, part of the Ryzen 3 family from AMD, which just released yesterday. It's only $129 and it is certainly shaking things up as far as competition is concerned with Intel. Just yesterday, I tested the Ryzen 1200, which has a lower out of the box clock speed, but otherwise for all intents and purposes, these CPUs are identical, but I wanted to use the 1300X because it comes out at 3.5 gigahertz and boosts up to 3.7 gigahertz, and I'm testing that at stock settings because I'm assuming someone that's gonna build you know, a budget system out there that's maybe not an enthusiast, first time builder, they're probably not gonna feel comfortable overclocking right away, but you certainly could. You could definitely overclock this CPU and probably get it up anywhere from 3.8 to 4.1 gigahertz, even using the stock cooler, which is the Wraith Stealth that I used in this system here today. I tested that just yesterday on the 1200. Cooling was really, really good. Uh, hovered around 62 to 63 degrees Celsius with an overclock after running for over an hour. And with the same TDP here on the 1300X, you should expect it to do pretty much exactly the same with that in regard. The RX 560 is also $130. This is the Sapphire Pulse card that I did test a couple months back with some esports titles, and we will be testing a lot of esports titles here today and some other multiplayer games. Pretty much every 564 gigabyte right now is $130 if you can find them in stock, and they do have a pretty plentiful stock of them over on Amazon. They haven't really been hit with the whole cryptocurrency mining boom like other cards like the 570 and the 580, so you should readily be able to find an RX 560 no issues. For all the testing, I was on the latest drivers from AMD, which is 17.7.2, and I was actually even only using 8 gigabytes of system memory. I pulled out my Corsair Vengeance kit and threw in some Crucial Ballistics, which has two 4 gigabyte DIMMs at only 2400 megahertz. That's the XMP profile for that particular RAM. So this really is geared towards the casual or budget gamer that's just going to throw these parts in a system and call it a day and hopefully get some good performance and that is what I'm going to want to show you guys here with this particular setup. If you do want links to any of the parts that I'm using in this system here today, I'll leave those down in the description below. I did swap out the case and the power supply for more affordable options because the ones that I'm using here are a little bit more expensive than what I, than what I would want to pair with the other components in here. So I suggested uh, the Corsair Carbide Spec 04, which is 50 bucks. I used that recently in a Ryzen 1600 system and an EVGA 500 watt power supply, which would be more than enough to power a setup like this one. So all of those parts are gonna be down in the description below, but now we can get into talking about some of the performance here using this setup. So I did all of my testing on 1080p at high settings with one exception being Player Unknown's Battlegrounds and that was really one of the titles that struggled the most more than anything here. That was getting performance below 50 FPS pretty much all the time. It wouldn't be impossible to play it like that but if you're really set on playing that game I would suggest maybe getting a little bit beefier of a GPU if that's going to bother you having performance down from 30 to 40 FPS. Although like I said it really doesn't make the game unplayable but it's not the experience that I would be after, but if, you know, if you're on a budget, then that's kind of really what you got to deal with here. But the other titles here actually ran really well. I was surprised just how well GTA 5 ran. I did my benchmark run through the Sandy Shores area, and it was running extremely well, over 60 FPS, I think, all the time. I didn't notice it going below 60 at all when I was doing that in Sandy Shores or even when I was playing around in the city initially, ran really, really well. Uh, Counter-Strike Go also ran extremely well, got 263 average FPS and a 1% low of 176 on the Dust 2 map, so no issues with, with titles like CSGO or other esports titles. Uh, Overwatch also ran extremely well for me in this particular setup, so really if you're going after esports titles, you shouldn't have an issue running any of those games with a setup like this. But I wanted to include games like GTA 5 and PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds because of how popular they are. They're some of the most played games right now according to Steam charts. So yeah, that's why I wanted to go ahead and include those. But let's get into the graphs now so we can take a look at the averages and 1% lows across all the titles tested here. You'll note that, notice that all these games were tested in high settings except Battlegrounds, which I did test 
at medium, but everything else was just on the high presets or the high settings I did have to adjust in GTA 5 because they don't really have a preset option, but I just put everything on high straight down the board. And all these games, like I said, ran very well. The sole exception besides, well, besides Battlegrounds, which I already mentioned, was Battlefield 1. That ended up getting an average of 47 and a 1% low of 30. So I went back and I tested that on medium settings and just dropping it down from high to medium gave us a very, very strong result here. Actually getting an average of 72 FPS and a, and a one, sorry, I almost said a minimum, a 1% low of 55. So dropping that down to medium is going to give you a very playable experience, what you would want in a first person shooter, just putting it on medium, it ran like absolute butter. So I'd have no issues recommending this setup if you're looking to play Battlefield 1 or really any other esports titles out there and multiplayer games. I tried to gear, gear this towards some of the most popular games being played right now on Steam or really any other platform, just, just the most popular games right now that I felt casual gamers would want to be playing. So I hope this video gave you a nice look at what you could expect if you're trying to build a system for under $600. If you have any other suggestions as far as what parts I should have, you know, put in versus others for a particular build like this one, then I would look forward to reading those down in the comments below. And if you have any other ideas for testing that you'd like to see me do with Ryzen processors or the graphics cards that I have on hand, please leave those in the comments as well because I got the idea for this video directly from the comments on it yesterday's with Ryzen 1200. Someone said, can you please test you know, Ryzen 3 with the RX 560, and I said, yeah, absolutely, let's go ahead and do that, I think it's a great idea, and hopefully many of you out there thought the same as well. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to leave a like on it down below, and subscribe if you're not already, and if you have been here for a while, you can always hit that notification bell, and you'll find out when I upload new videos like this one, and once again, if you want to get any of the parts in this system, or the recommended case and power supply, that I, would have paired, that I would pair with it if looking to spend under $600. There'll be a whole parts list down in the description below for anyone that wants to build a system like this one here for testing. But I'll get on out of here now, and I will catch you guys next time. Hope you have a great weekend. Tara.